Does Nikki have a cousin that can call in? <laughs> Oh, maybe. We should get Wendy, his lovely wife, uh, to to call in. That would be. Uh, she's that would been be on a. She's been on. Yeah, a, she on has. A That's right. She has. I mean, she's been part of a skit. Let's let's put it yeah. that way. <laughs> hey, Jeeper. I'm Josh. And on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I've got big news about a big upgrade to the Gladiator for the 2023 model year. And talk about close calls. This Jeeper was saved by the skin of his teeth. We'll find out what happened here in just a few. Later in the show, I've got something, uh, a little something, something you wouldn't think you would need to keep in the toolbox, but, uh, well, here it is. How about that Gladiator, right? In 2021, Jeep added the Willys package to the Gladiator Sport trim. It got rock rails and shocks from the Rubicon. Uh, definitely a nice upgrade, right? It also got limited slip differentials front and rear. Instead of the selectable lockers, that's still a pretty decent upgrade when you consider what they can do for you out on the trail. It also got some unique 17-inch black wheels with some 32-inch mud terrains instead of the stock 31-inch all-terrains that normally come with it. It also got some blacked-out grills and some other enhancements inside. Now, 2023 gets uh, all that plus a little bit more, if you will. It gets an off-road group exclusively for the Sport Trim Gladiator. Now, a lot of this is actually going to be coming at a very big discount, and they're all very trail-focused, very off-road-focused features. You're going to get things like the Auxiliary Switch Group. It's currently, just unto itself, a $500 option, $495 to be exact, and that's an option on the Sport Trim, and it gives you four programmable auxiliary switches. You can pretty much do whatever you want with them. You're also going to get a 240-amp alternator. That's some serious juice to push pretty much whatever electronics you want, including, well, pretty much the biggest winch you could slap on the front of that thing. You're also going to get a 700-amp maintenance-free battery to go along with that. That's going to be many, many years of, uh, well, free-flowing juice. Now, these three items unto themselves cannot be had on the sport trim for any price, and that's going to be the upgraded suspension, including those uh, the, uh, the the rock rails and the uh, the Rubicon uh, uh, the suspension package, essentially, um, for that. Now, um, the other thing that you're going to get is um, uh, the the 17-inch wheels. Uh, those are going to be aluminum, actually, instead of the sport's normal steel rims. Uh, you can't get that on any other uh, option as well. The uh, 32 inch BFG mud terrains that are going to come on those as well are going to be a lot better than the 31 inch all seasons fitted as standard. Now the package will cost buyers a total of $895, but that is a savings of over 60% off of an a la carte price of more than $2,000 for all of those features. And that's not including the fact that you can't get three of those features even if you tried paying for them. They're just not available on, the, on that trim. So, dealers have received bulletins on it, but it's not going to be in the con online configurator quite yet. So, if you're looking to buy a Jeep online, uh, maybe just hold off on a little while longer. Uh, you should be able to get these here really soon through your dealer network. So, uh, by all means, if you're interested in getting a Gladiator, you're kind of in the market for it, but you'd like one that has a little bit more off-road prowess without splurging for the uh, for the uh, the full Rubicon price tag, well, this off-road group might actually be the accessories that you're looking for at a price tag that you can afford, giving you the kind of Gladiator you actually want. Chuck? I wonder if you could... So, talking to you. Yeah, I wonder if you can still get. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you can still get the Max Toe and this together. I don't because see why that would not. Be now, the yeah. only thing that I would I, I'd be concerned about would be the shocks. I don't know if they're a different shock package with the Max Toe than what you would ordinarily get with like a Rubicon. Tony, can you speak I, to I that at all? I don't think so. Um, I, I think that the, they're the same. Now, if you go and get the Mopar lift. The two inch lift to go on it. They do upgrade the shocks. I think from two inch. Uh, uh, God, I want to say Fox. Uh, they're Fox shocks, but I, I don't quote me on that. The, but from two inch to two and a half inch, the the, the very nice shocks uh, for that. And and it. Uh, I mean, I think I got the the Mopar lift for twelve hundred dollars, uh, free shipping, which was just stupid amazing. Especially when you yeah, see the the, the FedEx crate. Yeah, especially when you see the FedEx guy walking that box in. <laughs> From the from the street, yeah. but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I I think that the the shocks are probably the same, and I don't see why you wouldn't be able to get the tow package. I can say this, Chuck, that the tow package uh, is such a great package to get because of the axles. You're getting those 
uh, Rubicon axles minus the lockers, but there is a a, a, a partial locker, a part time locker in the rear end. And and my God, that Gladiator has gone everywhere I've wanted it to to, to go. Uh, it, it, it's almost like, do I need lockers? Well, of course I do, but still, it's it, it made me ask the so question. So you you have the limited slip. Limited slip, uh, thank d- you. Different, yeah, and so that that essentially does act like, I mean, that is a locker. It is. Yeah, um, it, yeah. so once that, that sees that wheel spin, there's a, a clutch inside the differential for all intents and purposes that locks up and, and keeps those tires engaged uh, while under power. Um, so th- this group um, gives uh, not only that to the rear end, but also to the front end as well. Oh, very nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. I missed that when you were, when yeah. you were going through it. Josh... I don't know, man. I'm really partial to bent frames. <laughs> so, I mean, if they can put a bent frame package, I mean, I might jump on it then because I, I you don't have a know rock out in the now. back 40, if I'm not mistaken, that might take care of that for you. One rock, that's all we got on you, a pancake. You get a gladiator and you take the coils off of it and put those Alcan uh, leaf springs on it. Now, now you're doing Jeez. something. Just start oh, on this brand new Jeep. Oh, <laughs> yeah, now we're cooking with gas. Amen. <laughs> Hey, Jeeper, be sure that you're staying tuned to the Jeep Talk Show twice a week for the latest news from the Jeep world. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wimby. There will be body damage. Jock. I like making people laugh. That's, that's good for my soul. Jock. Yeah, I don't think so. And I think mean, that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. This is Chuck, and uh, on Saturday, I'm going to start my big trek to California. But probably not why you think I'll be going there. <laughs> well, you really getting a hunkering for some avocado, aren't you? Um, uh, I, and, I, and I, was, I was hoping he was going to go over there and, and bitch slap the governor. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I see if I see him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony, and I'm so glad that in 1997, I decided to buy a Jeep. The Jeep has changed my life and brought me friends like you. How many things can you own that you can say that about? Jeep is more than something that gets you from point A to point B. It's a lifestyle. And now back to the news. Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Oh, I'm with friends like you who need to <laughs> Well, this is soon to be a viral video. I don't know if you guys have seen this, if this has come across your uh, your eyeballs yet, but uh, Portage, Michigan Fire Department uh, got a call responding to a two-car accident call at 6.20 a.m. last Friday. Not unto itself all that uncommon, right? Fire departments get calls all the time to scenes of accidents, car accidents. This was a two-car accident involving a Chevy Cruze and a Jeep. The Chevy Cruze was in the intersection when they arrived of Shaver Road and West Center Avenue. Heavy front-end damage on the Chevy Cruze. Why? Because it ran into a Jeep Wrangler, well, what was left of it anyways, uh, and had rolled it onto its side. And there the Jeep was resting on some railroad tracks. Mm, That's never a good sign. Now, the driver of the Jeep was still inside the vehicle when first responders arrived. Firefighters assessed the victim within seconds of arrival. We see this in the video. And the police officer leaves the scene, more or less. I'm sure he's still on scene. He just leaves the view of the camera. The Jeep driver, we find, is pinned. He can't get out unto himself. Under his own power, he's got severe back pain, probably a bad injury from the accident. He is unable to move under his own power. A second firefighter is seen walking on scene. At 11 seconds into the video, a man in a gray sweatshirt points up the tracks and says something. The What he says, I can only imagine, is, boys, you may want to hurry. There's a train a-coming. Jeez. The second firefighter who was just walking onto the scene at the, uh, into the camera mu- uh, view drops his medical bag and rushes into action. And I'm sure you can only imagine why he is moving so fast at this point. We're now 16 seconds into the video. The driver is pulled from the wreck. His arms are loose and just kind of hanging. The guy is just barely there. Less than 30 seconds total into the video. Train plows through the scene, throwing the Jeep like a wad of paper. The driver of the Jeep was taken to a local local hospital for treatment. The driver of the Chevy Cruze somehow was uninjured throughout all of this. 
Uh, we've got a video, a link to the video in the show notes for this episode. You want to check this out for yourself. Uh, it is pretty crazy. Not a whole lot going on outside of what I just described to you. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's a harrowing scene, all of about a minute long that all of this takes place, less than 60 seconds, and, and all of the action really happening in about the first 30 to 40 seconds of it all. Um, things get very intense very quickly. So I'm thinking the Chevy Cruze owner is uninjured until the Wrangler owner gets out of the hospital. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good call. Good call. You ruined Wrangler. Yeah, this reminds me... Um, Gosh, over 20-something years ago, I was getting my EMT card, and uh, while you're going through the course, the first thing that they, it's actually a, a prerequisite to pass any of the courses, the first thing you say is, is the scene safe? Before you're allowed to help anybody in the, as a medical professional, is the scene safe? And uh, I always thought, well, no, you're in a fucking accident. <laughs> like, of yeah. course not. The scene's never going to be safe. But... Um, you, you always have to ask if the scene is safe. And uh, God bless guys like this that uh, kind of understand that that's a part of the training, but that's not a part of the lifestyle, right? I mean, the lifestyle is to do no harm. And we hope that the individual that was yanked from the vehicle, you know, there was not any kind of cervical issue. Right. But, dude, but I mean, but, even then at that point, I mean, y seconds are, are, are you, you know. Yeah. You'd be surprised, I mean, so though, you, Josh, you, you, the, in the, the world the that guys. We're no, I know, but man, the, it's either this guy gets turned to mist, or we pull him out and risk risk you know creating a paraplegic or something like that. I mean, it's either this guy dies or he's or you know he lives and may potentially right. be crippled. And, mm -hmm. and that the whole time as I I'm listening to you you know talk about this because you know I I don't I don't get the news I don't watch the news I I'm kind of under a rock out here, and when I hear this I'm like wow you know, 20 plus years ago, is the scene safe? You know, today, uh, it wasn't, and this guy probably is going to be alive because that firefighter or the paramedic or the EMT or the ambulance driver, whoever it was decided, no, we're going to, we're going to jump in here and pull this guy out, well, man. I'm, That's super I'm wondering though, if there hadn't been that bystander, maybe that was the guy, the, the driver of the Chevy Cruze, the dude in the gray sweatshirt. I don't know. There's no identification. There's no telling. Right. Um, but if not for him, would that other firefighter have jumped into action that fast? Would that guy have been pulled from the wreckage? There may not have been enough right. time, and and it was you know, hey Bob, get out of there! Just enough time for that one firefighter to get clear right before the jeep is struck. You know, this possibly could have even yeah. lost you know two lives with right. the other first responder there not knowing. You know, it's like okay, these are active tracks. I mean. And throughout the whole video, lights are flashing and everything like that. You got to wonder: Did the did the you know the crossing arms come down? Did the bells start going off? And you was, know, how was much that stuff even there? there a, I mean, you, the, right. There's lots of crossings that you don't have that. Right. And so you know there might have been n you know nothing that this this firefighter could have heard other than the fact that his partner rushed up and said, "We got to get this guy out of here. There's a train coming right now." And Chuck, you could probably speak to this too. The the first responder could have had tunnel vision, just focusing on, in on his patient and and what he needed to do. Well, you, so, uh, yeah, situational awareness is incredibly hard. I didn't actually start learning real situational awareness until whiskey training, uh, in in the advanced training for the combat side that you know, of course, we did overseas. And um, yeah, when I was a civilian EMT, I didn't get my my P status until I was in the service. But I, when I was a civilian EMT, you know, you work the box, you work the, the ER, you know, and you kind of have to do all of these things to get certified. You definitely do. You know, you, you do your, your uh, first assessment, you know, then you do your patient assessment, then you do your focus assessment, and you kind of lose track of everything around you. You're dealing with that patient is what I have to deal with, and you forget that, hey, there's a world out there. That's why they always say, is the scene safe? Mm -hmm. Is it safe? Because you're going to forget that you are a part of a bigger world when you're dealing with the patient that is in front of you. Yep. And I, I didn't learn the uh, situational awareness till the whiskey training that I got many years later. So they literally get you drunk so that you can think no. under, under pressure? 68 or? whiskey. It's combat medical training. It's, I'm sorry. Okay. Am I okay. wrong, Chuck? Am I, am I stepping out of turn here? It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, he, he's not. So it, it's an MOS and you have an identifier and the 68 series is the medical side of it. The whiskey portion is the combat side. 
that side even gets split in half and you have your clinical whiskey and then you have your combat whiskey. I was, I was a terrible clinical medic. So they, they kicked me out with the, with the recon scouts and <laughs> I ended up just going 19 series anyhow. So it was much, much better that way. But yeah. Why, uh, there, why is a, it called, Josh, there's a third separation there? That's Canadian whiskey. And, uh, and oh, that's where you get drunk. That's, that. that's probably like Canadian <laughs> bacon. So it's like non-alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> come on. And Josh, that's why I'm going to California. That's my dad's favorite drink. Canadian club, so I'm going there. Really? No, oh, yep. come on, really? <laughs> That's awesome. It comes full circle. <laughs> well, Jeeper, if you have a news tip response to any one of our stories, we love hearing what you have to say. If you got something to say about this particular story, especially, by all means, head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Find out all the different ways to interact with us here on the show. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, coming up in Tech Talk, a quick tip for something you didn't know you needed in your toolbox. Oh, these, this has got to be good. It, you know, anytime you can put a tool in there that you didn't know that you need, then you turn out needing it. It's always a big help. That makes sense? I need Failing. to say that again. Always better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That's what she said. Please From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, Josh, I'm really sorry to hear that your Jeep is still down and broke. Uh, <laughs> chin up, it'll get repaired someday. It reminds me of when I went to the dealership and asked for a book to fix my automatic transmission. Yeah, but they only had manuals. Gosh, I think it. I can do better. <laughs> I'm addicted to drinking brake fluid. Yeah, I can stop I anytime I want to. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes, I'm <laughs> laughing, and that's all that matters. That's right. All right, Jesus. boys and girls, I'll chat you later, and you have a good one. Bye. I just knew he was going to say, and something must be wrong with it because I can't stop. It just, but that wasn't it at all. <laughs> does, does Nikki have a cousin that can call in? <laughs> oh, we should get Wendy, his lovely wife, uh, to to call in. That would be. Uh, she's that been be on a. She's been on. Yeah, a, she on has. Yeah, that's right. She has. I mean, she's been part of a skit. Let's let's put it yeah. that way. <laughs> <laughs> so ball joint deletes. Have you guys heard of them? Yeah, I was actually posting in Discord the other day about these things. How did you Cash find out creation. about it? Oh crap! Uh, these have been around for for a long time. Um, I uh, uh, really discovered. Because well, I, I I wanted to go down this route recently only because of the death wobble that I've been experiencing in the XJ, uh-huh. uh, which is oh, that's primarily right. due to the flat spots on the tires. But aside from that, um, I was of course checking all the usual culprits, the the drag links, the tie rod ends, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, of course, checking the ball joints as well. And come to find out, my ball joints are a little bit worn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm getting a little bit of play. I actually posted a video in Discord uh, and everything showing that I'm getting about eighth of an inch. That's a lot. Maybe three yeah. sixteenths of play. I mean, it's it's more than, definitely more than, than you should be seeing. Vertical play mm-hmm. movement in, uh, in, uh, in, in, not the ball joints themselves, just in the knuckles on the joints. And, uh, so there's, there's too much movement going on uh, with the knuckles. So... Um, and with all of the issues that I've had with ball joints over the years, Tony, you, you probably, this is probably jogging your memory a little bit, uh, with the, um, uh, God, what was it? The alloy USA, uh, USA alloy, something like that. The ball joints that right. I had on there, um, and that myself and two other jeepers who all replaced our ball joints with these around the same time it was all within the same year. Um, all had issues with it. Um, and, and everybody is now running something different. Um, and so, um, yeah, it, it's time for something else. And so I figured, okay, this is, I think the third, fourth set of ball joints I've had on this Jeep. Um, it's time for maybe something else. And it's either at this point, I'm looking at a Dana 44, I'm looking at different knuckles or I'm deleting the ball joints. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, the reason why I asked where you, where you learned about it, because I thought they'd been around for a while, but from the information that I got very recently, they're brand new. Only one company makes them. And uh, I wanted to get more information about it. So I contacted uh, Greg uh, Henderson over at uh, Unofficial Use Only to find out what he knew about it. 
And he didn't know anything about them either because they're so new. So uh, anyway, we did a, a, a quick interview with Greg today, and uh, here it is. All right, so we're talking with Greg Henderson of Unofficial Use Only. Uh, you can listen to uh, an interview with Greg most recently on episode 719, our roundtable episode. He was a question and answer guest. Uh, and you can find Greg in our Zoom meeting from time to time, uh, usually every week, but uh, sometimes not. Uh, if you don't know Unofficial Use Only, you may know the vehicles that Greg has built, uh, like the Quadratech Tread Lightly 5050 JTE Gladiator, which is a two-door Gladiator. Uh, and it was uh, presented at SEMA 2022. Uh, in the Quadratech area and, and other places. And of course, it's been uh, driven around and taken off-road. It's not just a glamour uh, truck, is it, Greg? No, I take pride in the fact that when I finish a build, uh, it's fully functional. So, all, 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 uh, your builds, fact, uh, all your builds come with both drive shafts in and installed, right? Uh, both drive shafts <laughs> in and installed, uh, all systems functioning. In fact, uh, a lot of people don't know it, but when I finished the JTE right before SEMA, uh, the very first thing it did before it was displayed at SEMA and entered the Battle of the Builders was it actually went to a Tread Lightly event in uh, right outside of Vegas and went off-road before yep. showing up at the show. Uh, that had to be so. scary. I mean, you know, because, you know, you go through all that work and all that time. But anyway, we're not here. The people can listen to 719 to hear all the good stuff about the uh, the JTE Collider that you did. Uh, if you'd like yeah. to follow up with, uh, with Greg, like see what he's doing, what he's working on, go over to Instagram.com slash unofficial use only. Greg, thanks for being with us tonight. And I wanted to just ask you real quick, um, there's something new that I've seen recently on the YouTube. You know how people love the YouTube. I saw uh, a, a video about a ball joint delete. And if, if you've been into Jeeping very long, and it's not just Jeeps, but if you've been into Jeeping very long and you use the off, off, uh, off-road tires and take it off-road and get kind of aggressive with being off-road, you quickly learn the ball joints aren't going to last that long. And when I saw this ball joint delete, I got really interested and really excited. And I immediately thought of contacting you and finding out what you know about the ball joint deletes. But actually, they're, they're really, really new because uh, this was something that you uh, recently checked up on. Yeah, so the ball joint delete kits, um, and you struck the nail on the head. So the ball joints are exactly that. You know, they're kind of an Achilles heel, they're a necessary evil. Um, but some time ago, they started putting like this plastic shim inside of ball joints so that these SUVs felt more like a soccer mom car, right? They, you didn't feel as much of the road. And ball joint delete, I did do some checking up on it. Um, I haven't personally installed any yet, but I really dig the technology. So what they're doing is essentially following the you know the old kiss adage: keep it simple, stupid. And it's a it's kind of a, a I don't know the exact way to put it, but it's it's a better system than your traditional ball joint for most applications. Um, and I know they're doing them for. Dana 44s and Dana 60s and a bunch of others, but um, the guy who invented it, his name is Josh, and the guy, he kind of came up with this, um, and this is some of the information I learned, but think of it like a normal joint. A ball joint really only needs to turn on one axis, but ball joints in general are, it's a spherical ball inside of a cup, uh, metal and metal, and like I said, they've got plastic shims between them so that you don't feel as much of the road, but they can turn on multiple axes, right? So they, they, they swivel, and they don't need to. They only need to spin on one axis. So that's kind of what the ball joint delete thing did. It, it's almost harken back to the old days of a kingpin, um, which is, you know, was synonymous for strength. And it's, it's a pretty cool system. So instead of thinking of it like a shoulder joint, they're thinking of it like a hip joint, you know, where a hip joint tends to pivot more on one axis where a shoulder has multiple, right. you know, axes that it can follow. Um, so it's, it's a pretty cool system. And I did. I, I reached out to them to find out more about it. I talked with uh, Alyssa, who is, she handles uh, sales and marketing for them. Um, and she put me right in touch with Josh, who is kind of the inventor, and, and we struck it off really well because, you know, the, as soon as he started talking ball joints and I dropped the, you know, the idiotic notion of the plastic inside of there, um, we, we really did. We hit it off. So 
I've got to say, it's a pretty cool thing. And, um, you know, when I was on the phone with them, uh, I just like always, I brought up the Jeep Talk Show, uh, which was kind of fun. And I think they might even be interested to do a little episode on your show. So that would be really cool. Well, I hope so, because I wanted to tease people about uh, this, because I'm sure some of our listeners, if not all of them, haven't heard about the ball joint delete kits. I wanted to get Greg's input on it, because I trust what the way you think about things. And if it sounded like a good deal to you, we were going to reach out to find out uh, somebody that we talked to. And I just found out today that uh, there's only one company you can get this from, and that's the people that you spoke with. Yep. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I've got to say, I, I haven't physically installed one yet. I haven't used one. Um, but after talking with them, um, I even personally ordered a set for myself uh, so that I can install them on one of my rigs and see, you know, if they're really all they're cracked up to be. Because from the description, it seems like a much better option and much stronger. In fact, they did, uh, they let me know one thing. So they've put a bounty out, and this bounty is really cool because King of the Hammers is coming up really soon, and there's a lot of people racing at King of the Hammers. And they've put a bounty out. If you've got a Dana 60 and you install their all-joint delete kit, if you can break it during the King of the Hammers race while actually competing in the race, which everybody breaks parts, Mm -hmm. right? If somebody can break their ball joint delete kit on their Dana 60 at King of the Hammers, they will pay them $5,000 and replace their parts. Oh, that's cool. I mean, I, I did hear about the uh, play, pay 5000 but 5000 and get a replacement part. That's great. You can't lose there. Yeah. No, no, it's a win-win. Um, and, and that takes a lot of, you know, and excuse my friends, that takes a lot of balls for a company to say, you know, if you're running at King of the Hammers, which is an aggressive race, uh, you know, lots of people break lots of things. I mean, I've seen being a 60 snapped in half, let alone, you know, ball joint failures and everything else. But um, for a company to come out and say, they'll pay you $5,000 if you can break their stuff, that's, that's a ballsy move. <laughs> it really is. And the cool thing about the, uh, this, uh, this ball joint delete system is you only press it in once. And then once you pressed it in, you just replace the in, the, the innards, if you will, uh, to rebuild the ball joint, uh, the, the, this ball joint delete kit. So uh, if nothing else, if anybody's ever pressed in or pressed out a ball joint, that sounds wonderful on its own. <laughs> it's just not it having really to does. do that ever again. <laughs> well, Greg, thanks for helping us out with this uh, teaser information on the ball joint delete kits. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again really, really soon. Again, check out uh, Greg, unofficial use only, at Instagram. Uh, Instagram.com slash unofficial use only. And if you haven't seen it already, you got to check out that beautiful two door gladiator. Yes, two door electric gladiator. Thanks, Greg. So it, it does seem to be something new. Uh, Josh, if it's if you've seen this before or any of our listeners have seen this uh, ball joint delete before, I'd like to know about it. Because I, I, like I said, the, all the information I've uh, heard so so far is it, it's brand new, only available from uh, from the one uh, company. American Iron Off-Road Thank is the you. company who's, who's currently um, offering. You can get these all over the place. Um, they're, they're, they're sold all over. I mean, uh, uh, even um, uh, Northridge 4x4 has, has got these things. I, I think, uh, I mean, just about everybody is selling them. So, I mean, you can get them all sorts of places. But, I mean, for, for like for me, for instance, for a Dana 30, Dana 44, uh, these are going to set you back 550 bucks. It's a little spendy. Um, compare that to your average cost of let's call it around 200 bucks or so for uh, a decent set of, uh, of ball joints for, for, you know, Dana 30, Dana 44 axle. Um, so you're, you're looking at a good double the price. Um, is, is it worth it? Well, uh, you know, for me, uh, had I, you know, bought these, you know, years ago, I probably you know, could have uh, saved from having to buy two or three sets of ball joints. So if you get them now, there's a chance that later down the road, they're going to pay for themselves by the fact that you're not going to have to be replacing your ball joints every three years. Wasn't the Alloy USA about $250? Uh, am I remembering the price right now? I, I those? think, yeah. I want to say, yeah. I mean, and so that was, you know, going with a, um, a brand supposed to be a heavy duty off road version, you know, stuff like that. Um, I mean, the, I think Terraflex even sells a version of heavy duty ball joints for like around 300 bucks. So, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, you're going to spend 250 two to 300 bucks on, on a set of ball joints that are supposed to be a little bit better than average. 
Um, and so is 549, another 150 bucks, uh, another 250 bucks worth it. I, I don't know. I don't know. So, so Chuck, your uh, scrambler doesn't use ball joints, does it? It's all leaf spring. Uh, there's, there's still ball joints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm baiting you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang it. Yeah. You thought I wasn't paying attention. Tension. Turns out I was right. <laughs> ah, they're talking, <laughs> they're talking about it, damn it. Again, I don't need any mail. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah I, which, I can't remember which ball joints I put on mine, but I was not happy with them. I, I, it seems like it was Alloy USA, but I can't remember now. I know you had problems. There was, there was like you said, two or three people that put them on about the same time, listeners, yeah. uh, and uh, they they just didn't didn't work very well for very long. No, they just didn't last. I mean, they worked yeah. fine, but you know, after uh, a number of trail runs, um, they just started wearing down very very fast. So uh, between daily driving and weekend worrying. Uh, it just did. They didn't. They didn't hold up, you know. So I mean, was it the wheeling? I don't know. I mean, we wheel pretty hard out here in the Pacific Northwest. It could have been. It could have been just well, abuse. Well, I mean, that was the reason for buying them is because of the wheeling, not right. daily driving. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, I put what is it? Moog. 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 Yeah. Moog. Yeah. Is is pretty shitty brand or is that an okay brand? They no, were Moog they were great be, for a long used time. To be pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I heard that their manufacturing got moved. Um, and so they are a different company than they used to be. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that their quality has shifted in the last few years from, from what we, not, uh, not have to the positive, from. the shift wasn't a positive right. shift. <laughs> yeah. It was not a positive shift. So again, your mileage may vary. Um, yeah. and it all depends on where you're getting parts from. Um, your parts store may still have old school Moog on the shelf, you know, just because they don't move it that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you could still have, you, yep. you probably could still find good stuff out there. No, nobody has anything for an 81 scrambler on the shelf. Gosh. Yeah, good point. No, nobody. They don't even have it in the damn computer. Well, I'm sure you could find a lug nut. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got like a four-digit VIN number on that thing, right? Five. Yeah, there's five. <laughs> oh, it was the <laughs> yeah. 80s. <laughs> Before letters. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like lug brand lug nuts myself. <laughs> That's who I do. There you go. I love that. <laughs> Are you running out of time for all that tech talk? Uh, yes, I am quite busy, Mr. Voice out of nowhere. Then how about a quickie? Oh, geez, I don't know. We just met. I'm really not that kind of... It's time for Just the Tip. Oh, well, you could have at least just bought me a drink first or something. No, oh, hey, watch it. Oh, what are you doing back there anyways? Well, a few episodes back, Wendy was talking about favorite items to keep in the Jeep, a must-have tool for out on the trail, and my choice was a ratchet strap. I know, kind of an oddball, right? That's, but that's what I am. Preferably, you have more than a few laying around. And while out on the trail, I find they come in handy for those emergency situations when you need to hold something to something else and welding or rebolting isn't available. Well, oftentimes, a ratchet strap can do the task just fine. Now, while the ratchet strap may be a handy little thing to add to your tool bag for in the Jeep, you may want to keep a couple of nasty ones in the tool box in the garage as well. Now, I say nasty because the straps you use to hold down cargo, maybe even inside the Jeep, shouldn't be full of oil and grime and grunk and stuff like that. And when used more like a tool, well, straps tend to get a little dirty just like a wrench. Now, I don't have any tips for using a ratchet strap instead of a wrench, although that would be a neat trick. They can be used for several other things under the Jeep. Now, I like to use one or two anytime I'm installing new control arms to help clock the axle and pull it into position. Combined with a floor or bottle jack underneath the pinion and some creative work with a pry bar here and there, and they always drop right in nice and easy. The same can be said for when you need to line up different parts of the exhaust system. Moving one side of the exhaust into place to line up to something else is easy by ratcheting it into place with a strap. Just don't forget that it's under there, like I did recently, before starting the Jeep up or you're going to shrink that strap size real quick. Now, you need help lifting a tire into place? Get creative with the straps. Need to hold that bumper or a light into position while you get the first couple bolts in? Ratchet straps. Maybe that new latch mechanism is still a week out. Hold that rear hatch or door shut with a ratchet strap. Ever do a brake job and can't find the right way to keep that caliper out of the way? Ratchet straps. Use a ratchet strap like a clothesline, but for drying painted parts instead. Strung up taut, you can hang bent pieces of wire or coat hangers and hold freshly painted parts to dry with ease. See where I'm going here? There are hundreds of uses for a ratchet strap in, on, under, and in proximity to your Jeep. You're only limited by the size of the strap and your imagination. But if you get hurt, that's all on you. 
that date's trying to get away? Ratchet strap. <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it has so many uses. So, Josh, true story. I was uh, I was wheeling out in we now call it the uh, it's it's the South Eighty. It's the most northern piece of property we have. So South Eighty. All right. And uh, I blew and broke the um, transmission cross member on my CJ five. Blew it to smithereens. But you jumped. Don't ask how? why. It just. <laughs> <What the hell? laughs> well, yeah. Kansas is not as flat as you think it is in certain areas. So uh, um, I had to ratchet strap my tail housing of the transmission both directions to the frame. And, Dear you know, God. I know. <laughs> passenger side out and around, up, and from the driver's side out and around and up. And I pulled sideways, you know, made the transmission where it needed to go. What? Then made one, went all the way around the tub and held it up and drove out. You were able to yep. produce enough torque to actually drive the vehicle out of that? God dang. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm impressed, man. Yes. I am very impressed. It's all that's, that whiskey uh, training. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's plain old ingenuity have, right there. Man. I, I was bummed out. I didn't have any bailing wire, and I was like, damn it. Here we go. Got to use these goddamn ratchet straps. This happens well, and, many and years. transmissions tend to run a little warm. I'm I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I mean, I'm, oh. it wouldn't be anything you could drive down we, the interstate with, but it probably limped you home. But still, I'm sure shit was melting by the time you got there. Well, no. I mean, it's all crawling. I mean, you're not doing anything over you know ten miles an hour. You know, I mean, it's all pasture driving, and it's only a mile or two. And, you know, we didn't do it that instant. You know, we, we walked uh, home, then went back with ratchet straps and ratchet strapped everything together and then drove it home because there was no way we were ever going to get any vehicle back there to get it out because of how, how deep I was in the, in the ravine. But, oh, yeah, ratchet straps are a good thing to have on the trail, 100%. Hell, yeah. This is an, yeah. a wonderful uh, story to use uh, to, 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 to convince your spouse why you need another modified jeep because you know you got to get it get, get the other one out <laughs> at that time yeah at that time i only had one and now we have, have eight yeah and, and we're seriously looking at another one so yeah there you go is it a cj8 you're looking at god <laughs> no it's not even american it's actually not even american so yeah all those Japanese Jeeps. Yeah, I can never trust those. <laughs> Suzuki, <laughs> I guess. Not, it's not Japanese either. It's not Japanese either. Nope. Whole different country. Whole different uh, continent. You're no, a German, you're yeah. a German Jeep, aren't you? No, not Mercedes. a German one. Mercedes. Keep going. What? What? Getting closer. Nope. Nope. All right, we'll have to have to stay tuned for uh, uh. for. Chuck That's is buying now. We're gonna have to create a whole nother segment. What's Chuck buying now? <laughs> yeah. What's Chuck contemplate buying? I never really pull the trigger. I always just kind of look and dabble <laughs> and go. No, nah, I'll put my money towards something else. Window shopping. That's uh, that's fun too. Uh, nothing wrong yeah. with that. Well, Jeeper, uh, anything to, to add to this mod? Maybe you have a creative solution for a uh, a ratchet strap. Something that you've gotten uh, kind of creative, thunk out the box with. Let us know. I'm always uh, kind of curious to see what you're what you're doing out there. Uh, if you have a question for Tech Talk, head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. And send us a message. Carbon fiber zip ties. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they better be reusable because uh, those don't sound cheap. Yeah, they need a little tab. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, coming up uh, this week's interview, episode 753, Sean and Jared of America's Most Wanted 4x4. That's AMW4X4.com. They put a Hemi in your Jeep, and I, I have to do this one. This segment of the show is brought to you by Lug Nuts. There's nothing like Lug Nuts to secure a wheel to a Jeep. Get yours now and be sure to ask for genuine Lug brand nuts for your Jeep wheels. That's Lug Nuts. Maybe you guys have heard this one before. It's kind of along the same lines as Lug Nuts. Uh, people think that it's fine to rub the belly of a pregnant woman. You know, kind of a congratulations type thing, but nobody ever no, rubs yeah, the balls like the of rub. the uh, of the dad. Oh God, dang it! <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> 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 
Good job. Do Good job. Slower. Slower. And he's the one doing all the work. <laughs> You're welcome, Josh. <laughs> I'm not touching that with either of your poles. <laughs> But something that you definitely want to get your hands on is the Jeep Talk Show newsletter. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, and there you're going to find all kinds of useful information. You're going to find uh, the different ways to interact with us here on the show, how to contact us directly, and even how to sign up for the Jeep Talk Show newsletter, which comes directly from us to you. And it's chock full of all kinds of great information about what's happening here on the show, what's going on behind the scenes, what's coming up, and of course, how you can join in on our Tuesday roundtable episodes. It's a lot of fun. We hope to see you there. It's happening every Tuesday, and it's happening all at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. We'll see you there. Well, that's all the Jeep Talk Show there is for now, Jeeper. Until our next episode, be sure to call or write into the show and let us know where you're listening from. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's largest, most downloaded Jeep podcast. something doesn't fit you always have the option of making it fit this means uh, the means of which is uh, this is accomplished and the ramifications of such is entirely up to you however broadcasting since 2010 so uh, uh this was shared with me today uh greg uh, henderson unofficial use only great supporter of the show lots uh, giving us lots of help and advice uh, in the background and always great to be able to re- reach out to him and ask him about uh, things like these uh, ball joint deletes. Anyway, he was talking to somebody uh, recently on the phone, and they commented that uh, uh, he was talking to them about, "Hey, would you like to do a uh, be on the show? I'm sure, I'm sure they'd love to have you on the show." And they said, "Yeah, we're looking at uh, doing a, a a big Jeep show, and uh, they're uh, they're number one in uh, in their their market." And he says, "Really." He goes, have they had Jim Morrison on? Because Tony's interviewed Jim Morrison. <laughs> like, that's badass. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thanks for putting them in their place. Yeah. <laughs> Greg's good people. I'm, I'm liking Greg more and more. Yeah, every day I talk to him. He's good, good people. <laughs>